I will work with this presentation about the building tool from Patterns. We will first talk a bit about procedural buildings and how they are made, and then in a moment I will also jump into Houdini and Unreal and show you a bit of how we can use these tools. Now let's start from the beginning and taking maybe a step backwards and just talk a bit about procedural buildings in general. So I will show you some examples in case you would not be that familiar with procedural buildings. Here are some examples of that. Now the first example is also already a quite well known example, which is from Anastasia. So she made a procedural lake house a couple of years ago and it still holds up really well today. It's a really great example of how we can make procedural buildings in Houdini with a unique style and shapes and forms. Another example is building a procedural house from boxes controlled by level artist or environment artist. So they can place here in Unreal, for example, basic simple boxes. So these represent the rough shape of how the building should look like. So at a certain point, the Houdini tool comes in and these boxes will then be used as input. And then the models, modular kits, is then assigned or placed at the correct position. So we can still modify these boxes and even add more, add less. There is a lot of room here to play around with these. And we can create quite unique buildings in seconds because the tool will make a lot of decisions on how the models will be placed. So this is another example of building tools. So these were two examples of procedural buildings. So there is a lot of room, a lot of variation you can build. And I will show you a bit more here and show you how we can do this as well. Now, procedural buildings, I want to go into like a bit of the thinking on how some of these are built. So to give you already an overview is that we create a certain input shape. We then define how many floors does this have. Then we're going to loop over the floors and we will define how many instances or walls we can place at this floor. So having an input shape can be quite simple. Like you could see here, like a simple box with an extrusion. So you can have a very simple input like we just saw from these examples. Now from here, we can calculate how many floors we have. So in this case, it's a large building and we have many, many floors. So we have multiple slices representing the floors. You can make things a bit interesting by having variation in the floor heights. So here in this case, we have a system that we can tell the tool to have, for example, different heights. So let's say the first floor is five meters and then other floors are, for example, three meters. So we can have variation and play around with that. Now, if you take a look at one single floor or the first floor, it will look like this. So we extract the first floor, we will loop over this, and we will now define a couple things. What we want to do is we want to loop over the curves or the sides of each wall. So let's take, for example, this side, and we will then, for example, calculate how long this wall is, and we're going to place modular walls, how many will fit on the line. So you can keep this complex as you want to, you can keep it quite simple, but that's roughly the idea here. So we will do that for then each side of this of this floor until we create like a wall around the building. Now this is only for one floor, so we will repeat this step to do all the floors and then eventually we will have then a building. So this is so roughly an overview on how some of these building tools were made. So I hope this might give you some idea what's going inside of these tools. Now let's talk about then the actual lab tools that are available. So if you have uh, Houdini and the toolset labs installed, you will actually find the building tools made for you. So if you would now open Houdini, type in building tool, you will find a tool that can, for example, make a building like this. What you see here is actually a demo that you can get from the ZFX website. So you can download this file and play around with some of these elements. What we now recently have been introducing is a building tool from patterns. We specifically give this the name building tool from patterns because it's based on patterns. So the other tool was not necessarily based on pattern structures. So what is new with that, of course, it works on patterns, which I will talk more about and we will use. It's also overall faster. It has been made from scratch and there have been some improvements. The UI is somewhat different because we have now pattern data to plug in, so it will be structured different. And the setup is quite similar with both of these tools. So with both tools, we need to input a certain shape, like a box, and we also need to input a certain modular kit, like what are my walls, what are the windows. We both need this data, and then we just bring it into the tool, and then the tool will handle what to do with this data. Now, going a bit back to the patterns, I will here quickly explain some of these patterns and how we can use them. 
Of course, in a moment, we will jump into Houdini and I will show you in how we can fully use them in the game. So if you look at this building here, we can see that there are quite specific placements of models. For example, always in the middle of a building, there is this purple color. Also, what you can notice is that we can see that we have the first floor, the middle floor, and the top floor. They have also very specific modules. So these are all, again, defined by patterns. So we can write rules to place models in the middle of a building or on the sides of the building, for example. Now, if you take a wall and look a bit closer at this, what we can notice is that if you would type the name of this, like A, B, and C here, there is a certain pattern that we can see here. So, for example, models A are always from the beginning and at the end, and C is at the middle. So let's take a look at how the pattern would be structured. So we're going to type in A with specific symbols and brackets. We're going to type in B, then C, then B, and then A again. So the way that we're going to use here, for example, with A, the squared brackets, will mean that we'll only repeat this once. The model B with the lesser and greater than symbols around it means that we will repeat this model until it fits until the next module, which in this case will be C. So what will happen if the wall will be longer, model B will be keep repeating until it fits until the next module. So then we have model C and we specifically want this model two times. So we can actually place the number two behind this to say we want this two times. Then we're going to close off with B and then A again. So here we are making our first pattern or this can be a look at our first pattern. So our result here is then again, we have A, B, C, B, A, and the symbols and brackets you use will definitely matter on how your pattern will react. So if you want to have a model only once or twice, we're going to use the squared brackets. If you want to have a module repeating over the wall, we're going to use then the greater and lesser than symbols. We can also use the minus and the multiply icon to, for example, add modules. Like we can see here with uh, this example, where we're going to say we want A, then we want to play C and then we want to place A again. And we only want to repeat this twice with the number two. So this specific order will be placed twice in my wall and I will move on to the next part. So with the minus, we can add modules in that part. Then here, for example, we have a random icon. So we'll basically now repeat model A, but it will pick a random variation of model A if available. So you have to make these variations, of course, and it will then randomly pick a variation out of that. Now, if you have watched the Unreal 5 Matrix demo, then you might notice that this is a large city, and they also use Houdini to help with them. So the buildings are created with Houdini tools, and they also are structured in a way with defining patterns, but they use actually the more correct term, which is called shape grammar. So we call it patterns to keep things a bit more simplified, but the more correct term would be shape grammar. If you are interested in how they approach the making of their city, I can highly recommend watching their YouTube videos on how they build a city, especially if you are now starting to research these procedural city and building generators. Very interesting information there. So without further ado, let's just jump into a demo where I'm going to build something in Houdini and bring it into Unreal. So in Houdini, now let's just grab a simple box. And from this box, we're going to make it size 5 because we want to scale bigger so we actually have a house. Then we're going to type in our building tool and we want to make sure we have the building tool from patterns. Just plug it our box in and we should have then a basic result, like something like this. So we have a pre-made example, which is just two units by two units as a wall size. So this is just mainly to like roughly check if things are working. Now, of course, we want to use our second input, which is then used to plug in custom data. And we can quickly set this up by actually here going inside of our tool and we can just grab these nodes. So this is the built-in example and we can just to make it a bit easier for us just grab them here over here. Then we can plug this in into our input but before I do that let's just go for them and for example change the naming. So here we have our model name. So this is the actual model. In this case we're just going to use planes to keep it very simple but you can load in something else if you want to. Uh, we can just for example call this wall. This wall, we can also use the auto dimension, so it will automatically look at the size of this and it will capture that. Then when we have the wall, we also need to go over here and this is then describing the floor. So this will describe how the wall will be used over a floor. So here we can just say uh, main floor, for example. 
And instead of this now here, we're going to then use our wall. So the brackets and symbols I just talked about in the presentation will now here be here at play. So I will in a moment show you a bit more about what we can do with this. Also a good idea might be to name uh, the node itself. So this is, for example, our main uh, floor. So this is our most basic floor, for example. So let's now grab here our inputs and play, place it over here. We can also press this button to show the floors. This will then capture what are the different types of floors. Let's just here grab our own one. So this is the built-in generic floor, but we want to place this with our own custom one. So by default, you will not see that much because this is exactly the same one as we built in because we copied. And now we want to actually change, for example, the size. So let's change it by, for example, one. And you can see it automatically changed, but the position is off. And what is important with this is if you ever use custom models, they need to be at the specific pivot point here at the middle of the world. So we can quickly do that by using the match size node. So if you load in custom models, make sure you, you are doing something similar, like placing a match size node and setting this to minimum in the Y and then minimum in the Z. So we have it perfectly here centered. So also here with the building utility generator, the arrow that it is pointing will be basically the orientation on how you should place your models. So this is the location and the rotate and the orientation of how your model should work. So let's now go back to our tool and we, see, and we will now see that it works as expected. So if I now would go here, grab my handle uh, and play around here with the size, you should be able to see that we can just play around with this at more and less of them. Also be careful when scaling this very small or zero. Now let's say we want to actually build more models. So we only have one model. So let's say I have another model and let's say this is my door, for example, this is my door model. My door is maybe a bit bigger. So let's just give this two and we're going to plug this or merge these two together. And these are done. For example, this is our models. Now we want to do the same thing then with a floor. So let's describe a new floor. And this floor is, for example, the uh, bottom floor. Something like this. Also here, let's just call this bottom floor. Now what we're going to do here is we will now start to uh, add things over here. So let's say I want to place a wall and in the middle of the wall or the floor, we can place a door. So make sure you're typing the names correctly. So let's say we're going to place walls, then we're going to place doors and we're going to finish off with placing walls again. So what will basically happen is the door will be at the middle of my floor. So we're going to merge these together. And this is then, for example, floor data, redirect the lines like so, and go back to our tool. We can then say show possible floors. And now we have our new floor. So I can just grab this over here. And I can say that only at the bottom here, we want to have our bottom floor, like so. So you can see that we are now placing this bigger block here at that location. So I can now swap this with an actual model of a door, and this will only be placed here at the bottom. So even if I uh, make this bit larger, we just keep repeating that other floor. So as you can see, we can just slowly start to build up these patterns and define that only doors can be at the bottom, for example. Uh, you can also quickly go to our visualizing options and settings here, and we can do some override of the color. You can, for example, just pick here a random color, and then it will give random colors based on the modules. So we only have two modules, so you can see that we only have this color and then the other one. So this might be quickly to visualize things a bit more. Now, let's also talk a bit about adding variation. Now, to build variation, let's here go to our wall. And let's bring it a bit on the side here. And let's say I have more versions of the wall, like so. Uh, we can just, for example, keep the plane also like this. So we can quickly change it back and forward. So here, what we want to do is we have our name wall. And we want to say that wall actually has variations of this. So we're going to keep adding a couple variations. And then we have to say the naming of this. So for example, we can just keep it simple because like we have variation wall one and variation wall two. Now this is referencing now to our new uh, nodes here. So I have to keep the naming here as well. So this is wall number one 
and this is then wall number two. So if I would now merge these together, this is our new variation of the walls. So we have just defined wall number one and two as a variation type. So let's see how this works. Uh, to maybe visualize this a bit better, I'm going to go here to settings. I'm going to reset the colors to input and we're going to input a couple color notes here. So color, uh, we can, for example, take some shades of blue to visualize what's going on. Now, going back into our main floor, we are now going to add that multiply icon. And as you can see, we are now adding variations of that wall. And this is how we can build variations. So we now have a specific floor number one and just some random scattering of our models over there. So we can make things a bit bigger. So let's say like so, or like this, we can play around with this and we can change things back and forward. I immediately want to also jump into Unreal. So I explained some of the very basics or the, the minimum basics that you would need to know to use this tool. And I want to then use uh, the Unreal side of things. So when we have our tool, our default output is this geometry. So the geometry that you plug in will also be the result. For Unreal, we want to, of course, use instancing. We want to do instancing of models and use the modular kits that are available in the game engine. So if we look here with the null nodes at some of our outputs, we can see that these are then our points holding that uh, location. So each point holds the location where a model is. And this is what we're going to use into Unreal. We want to use instancing data. So now let's grab our network, everything except for our box, because we want to load in a custom input from Unreal. And we're going to press shift. I'm going to press shift C, or you can just press the icon over here. And it will then be collapsed into a node. And you can either just right click on this and we can make a digital asset, or you can make a version one. Then we can give this a name like workshop building tool and we can press apply now this will make a menu and here we can then start to add parameters now the most interesting parameter for me if i would go into my network so we still have our notes over here let's maybe structure it like so so our most interesting parameter for me would be uh, describing here our uh, floor description on how things are placed so I'm going to just go and drag that over here and press apply. So of course, if you're familiar with Houdini, you can add as much parameters as you want. We can just fill the whole menu with different types of things. We're going to keep things a bit more simplified. So we have enough time to explain most of the things that I want to show you here. Also important when we are done is to also place an output node. So this is then my output and we can call this, for example, instances. And let's now again, just click save and jump into Unreal. Here we are into Unreal and I have a scene where we potentially here on this part, we want to have a building. So for example, the level artist made roughly the level and they defined like, hey, we want a building over here and we can use this now in our tool. So I keep it simple as a box and we can play around a bit more about it in a second. So, but this is now a very simple box and we want to then deploy our tool on this. I've also here uh, checked hidden on in-game. So every time I press the G key, it will actually be hidden so we can quickly uh, this hide this box. So what you will need to do is then go into our building file and we can drag and drop our HDA. So I have done that over here and we can then drop our HDA in our scene. So we'll start to calculate, but potentially by default, um, we will not see anything because we have not defined any instances and so on. Uh, so you probably won't see that much in general. So what you can also do with this menu now is uh, since we had an input into Houdini, we also have an input over here. So we can say an input from the world and we can now pick our selection. So start picking and we want to pick this cubes. This is our building and we're going to use this as our selection. So like I mentioned, there is nothing special now because we are set to instancing so if i go back to houdini again we are just basically now sending points to unreal but we're not saying what to do with these points so if i would now uh, grab this as my output uh, and save this uh, this will then be my new output just planes. 
So if I would now go here and rebuild my tool, we now have here these boxes or these simple plain cards. Uh, what you can see that there are gaps in our building. So let's already fix that in this stage. So what is happening is the actual box that we have from Unreal, the topology of it is not that good for my tool. So what I usually do at this stage, so let's say we have an input from Unreal. We want to do a clean pass. And with this clean node, we are just basically getting rid of any special information that might conflict later. And we also want to do a flatten pass. So we're going to say dissolve flatten edges. And this usually will solve some of the issues that we have here. So it's important that you might need to keep, keep this in consideration. So let's just go to assets and save. Now here into Unreal, uh, we're just going to go rebuild. And now we should have the proper results. So now let's uh, add actual models to our places. Um, and we're going to just start off here with our random floors. So luckily for us, we have mega scans uh, like here, and we want to just grab these mega scans assets and overwrite them on what we see here. Uh, what is important to know is, let's say we open a mega scan, is we need to know the size. So in our case, what we need to know is here the 400 by 300 units. This is quite important for us. So we know that the height is 300 units and 400 units in the length. So into Houdini, what we need to know here is that our size of our walls is then uh, that those 300 by 400. Now in Houdini, there is actually 100 units difference. So we need to divide that by 100 units. So our actual size will be four and three in the height. So this will be our actual size. Now, we actually also need to make sure that we set our height here in the floor. So we need to make sure that this is also three. So that's step one. Now, step two is we need to now assign that this model, for example, just number wall is zero or just wall. We need to say that this is actually referencing to an Unreal model. So in to Unreal, uh, we're going to close here my menu. And we're going to open here our uh, models. We're going to right click on them. And we're going to here co copy a reference. Then with this copy, we need to make an attribute. With this attribute, we need to call this Unreal instance. We're going to store this into the points. This is a string value because this will hold, again, this is the path of where something is stored. And we just co basically copied a reference to that. So this is the reference to the Megascans model. So doing this, this is now linked. Now, if we place it over here, that means that our building tool, uh, if you look at our outputs, it will automatically uh, gather these informations. Or if it's not done automatically, let's go to settings. And we here we also need to enable here get instancing from pets. So now we can see that we get these instances, which for most cases will probably be empty since we need to define all of them uh, for this to fully work. So let's go back and uh, fill in for all of them. I might go a bit faster here, so we win, so we win some time with that. So once that is set, uh, we now have all the instances. And we, of course, again, want to make sure that we are now outputting instances. And let's hit save. Into Unreal, uh, rebuild our tool. And in a moment, you should probably see then this result. So what we can see that this is working. So of course, uh, at our bottom floor, uh, we did not set up anything yet. So don't look at this too much. Um, what we can do here is that I actually have my pattern. So I can actually just uh, remove my first part. And let's say that this is only our main floor. And this is fully working. So now if I would grab my box and make this bigger, we can see that we now have a big house. So again, let's say the level artist here, they are working on their scene. We have a nice scene. And maybe we want the building to be bigger. You can just here start to scale things up and we have it, it like so. Or, or maybe they want it to be smaller. Maybe they want to have like a tower shape like this. They can just play around with that. So it's a very quickly now process of doing this. And we now essentially, again, we want to repeat now this process. Uh, let me maybe skip my box like this back again. We want to now repeat the same process then for the last part here as well. So we have in Houdini our information. We can uh, maybe here create a frame around this. So here, and this is then our of walls. Then here we have our uh, door, for example. 
So let's just now, uh, we can just copy this node from here and we need to override some of this information. So again, it's in real, open your Megascans library. And let's say that uh, this is then my door. We can look at the size, which is 400 by 400. So this is a bit different. So we need to make sure that we have the right size. Maybe let's also grab a model like this to have some more variation. So this will be another bottom model. And this then has 400 by 400 size as well. So over here, let's make another copy. So the walls are the same size, which is a four by four. Then this is my door. And this is then called, for example, a bottom window, like so. So I have added a door and a bottom window. We can merge these together and overwrite this. Uh, then let's set our instances. So again, same as we just did, right click, copy the reference, jump into Houdini, and we're going to remove what we have here and paste our new reference. Same with the other model, right click, copy reference, select it over here and place that model. So that's all now set. And we of course need to overwrite or uh, add some other things over here. So I know that my floor is actually in the height four, and I actually want to now use my new models, which is called um, the bottom window. So I'm just going to copy the name and let's just build it like this. So we're just going to fill windows and then in the middle, we will have a door. So now let's hit save again. We're going to click onto our tool and rebuild that tool. So it's been rebuilt. Of course, I modified my pattern. So let's reset that. And as you can see, we're now having a, a door here and these windows. So as you can see that sometimes if it doesn't have enough space for that, it will still try to place that door. So if you make your modules very long, it will also make it a bit more difficult for the tool to know how to place every single module. So from here, I hope you can see that you can now plug in more and more models. So I actually have more models prepared for you that you can use if you have the project files. Uh, we can also here have, for example, like this, like a trim bar for the top part. So we can, for example, scatter a nice bar trim parts here at the top or you can do something else with like corners and maybe one more thing to show you is then maybe quickly having a just like a basic plane as a roof so into our building tool if we would look at our outputs uh, we have one more output over here uh, let's bring in the null node here and these are then uh, the floor slices so we can actually visualize the floors in case you want to generate something on the floors or in case you just want to grab the roof model. So what we can do is we can just here with a blast node capture our roof and we want to then inverse this. So we have this and we want to just merge the results together like so. So from here, again, if you would be a bit familiar with Houdini, we can just uh, convert this simple plane into an actual interesting roof shape or something like that. Um, but to just keep things a bit simple, uh, we generally just leave it like a plane and save. So now again, uh, we have here our tool and let's rebuild this. And now we have just a simple plane here. So you can use this again to scatter props on, or you can actually uh, do an extrusion with an inset or something to make it like a triangle or roof shape. You can just play around with that shape that's now available. That's roughly what I wanted to show you here with this small workshop and introduction into this building tool. So as you can see, if you know a bit on how things work, you can quickly set up this tool and get it to working into Unreal. So you're now free to add more cubes. Like I mentioned, uh, we can just here uh, add another cube. We can click onto our tool and we can say that we want to here have another selection. And now we will have two buildings. So it's possible to uh, have them intersect with each other, like so. Uh, but by default, they will just uh, not really like be boolean together with each other. So if you want to like actually boolean the shapes into each other, we also need to set it up into Houdini. So you have a bit of control of how the shape looks like. So talking a bit more about the Houdini setup that could be improved again. Uh, you could, for example, here, like I just mentioned, you can include a boolean operation over here. Uh, we can here, for example, do a union operation. So we're going to merge all the shapes together into one single uh, base. So we don't have intersections and so on. 
So, but that might depend on the complexity and other things that you have in your world and scene. So you might want to change this. Other things we can do is here, we had a very manual way of setting this up. We actually had to manually set up one model at a time. Uh, so you can see this will take some more time if you have hundreds of models. So there is actually a more automatic way or a more Houdini way or procedural way on doing these things more faster, which will include things like looping over, for example, like a data table. You can find this information or this tutorial that goes a bit more into complicated things of the building tool on the Project Titan website, where we also have a building tool and we actually explored a bit more further on how we can, for example, build data tables to loop over these data tables with hundreds of models and automatically assign them so we don't have to do it manually. So that was a bit more information about that to know that this is just the beginning of the building tool. You can do much more with this tool, but I hope you have some great introduction now and to start using some of these elements. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this workshop.